Hi. Welcome to another movie plot. Spoilers ahead. After two years of a disease spreading throughout New York City, all efforts to find a cure to the cockroach pandemic by the CDC and Dr. Peter Mann have failed, so he enlists the aid of noted bug Dr. Susan Tyler. Susan releases a new insect of her own making into the sewers engineered to poison the roaches called the Judas breed, it can't reproduce and will die off in 180 days. The Judas does its job and the city hasn't seen a single case for six months, and Peter and Susan have since been married. Three years later a preacher traps himself on a rooftop, with nowhere to go and his pursuer breaking through the door, he jumps from the roof onto some painter's scaffolding. With his attacker looking like a tall man in a trench coat, the startled preacher loses his grip and falls to his death in the alley below. The 10-year-old Chewie watches this from his apartment, commenting on how funny the killer's shoes look and mimicking the clicking sound it makes on his spoons, as the priest's body is dragged into the sewer. The married couple is struggling to start a family, so Peter gives Susan a bottle of Italian nun urine, supposedly to help the process, before being called away to work by his assistant Josh. Arriving at the dead preacher's church, he finds a few dozen illegal immigrants locked up in the basement, all infected with yellow fever so the CDC was called in to set up a quarantine zone. As they look through the basement they come across a survivor claiming that a dark angel is coming, and stalactite turds hanging from the ceiling that contain buttons. buttons. That night Chewy spots Mr. Funny Shoes come back to the building, though his Geppetto-looking father Manny doesn't see them. Susan is working with her assistant Remy when they are approached by a couple of neighborhood kids Ricky and Davis, who are looking to sell some bugs to the bug lady. So she gives them 10 bucks for everything they got, including the bug that they usually charge $1 just to look at. It's yours. Later that night Susan extracts the bug from the cornflakes box and notices that it is just a baby, but it bites her so she nails it down to a board. She notices the bug is frothing like the Judas breed and runs it through a litmus test, confirming that it is one of her babies. A dark stranger watching from the street makes its way inside of her apartment, smashing a lamp that's shining on the baby bug. When Susan investigates she finds the window open and Judas missing, not seeing the figure behind her as it scurries away. Peter is angry about the intruder but Susan's concerns are on Judas, not knowing what long-term impact their continued living could have. The next day we see Chewie at his dad's shoe stand, and Peter and Susan have the boys show them where they found the Judas breed. Searching an abandoned locker room Susan finds the beginning of the creature's nest, not realizing and almost getting got, before transit officer Leonard walks in and busts them. While Leo and Peter argue permit Susan meets Chewie who begins mimicking her shoe taps, and shows Susan the Mr. Funny Shoes figure he's made out of some wire. Funny shoes. Ricky and Davis go back to the subway tunnels to look for more specimens to sell. They find a giant egg sack called an Oatheca which Susan promised to pay them big bucks for, but also come across the one who the locals call Overcoat Slim, munching down on a dog. Ricky trips over and gets stuck in some wire, giving the giant roach time to eat Davis before turning its attention on him killing them both before appearing human again. Susan goes to talk with her old mentor Dr. Gates who once called the creation of the Judas breed unforgivable, but now with two healthy grandchildren alive because of it he is grateful. He explains how even though the test subjects all died in the lab, things in the wild have a way of evolving to survive. Later that night Chewie sneaks out and goes across the street to the boarded up church. He breaks in and looks around for Mr. Funny Shoes who stalks him a bit before showing himself to the child. Clicking away at him Chewie uses his spoons to respond, before a second Mr. Funny Shoes flanks him. Thinking he has finally found some friends, the creatures slowly descend on Chewie as his expression changes. In the morning Manny discovers that Chewie is missing from his bed, and after getting no help from authorities he remembers his son's obsession with Mr. Funny Shoes in the old church. He goes across the road and sees one of Chewie's wire figures just inside the doorway, so he goes around back and breaks into the church through a cellar door to the basement. Armed with a shaving razor and lighter, he finds the basement connects to the sewer tunnels. At the same time the sewage treatment plant finds something strange and contacts the resident bug expert Susan, so she rushes off leaving Peter to search the subway alone, while also not waiting long enough to find out she is pregnant. Susan meets up with Remy and her friend Jeremy, who reveals to them an almost man-sized insect carcass. Susan has Remy take pictures of it and bring the creature to Dr. Gates, who studies it to find human-like organs inside and claws indicating that it is a warrior cast, meaning it's also part of a colony. Peter meets up with Leonard and Josh having got a permit to search the subway tunnels, and Leonard tells the story the homeless have of a serial killer called Overcoat Slim Long John. Peter gets a call from Susan telling him she will meet them at the station, but he doesn't have enough time to tell her she's pregnant before the call cuts out. They come across another bug bathroom covered in shit and begin to take samples, now at the old armory station and further than Leonard has ever been, a baby Judas approaches him. So he stomps on it. 
Peter and Leonard begin arguing over it when the balcony beneath them collapses. They crash down to the floor below, but with no way to climb back up, they send Josh with directions to get help. Josh gets lost however and stumbles onto a nest of oethekas. He almost climbs a pile of trash into the church basement but slips and falls, alerting a nearby Judas adult. Trying to make the climb again Josh is stabbed in the back by the beast, spraying blood all over him and dragging him back underground. Susan waits at the station for Peter to return, studying the pictures that Remy took, she notices that the bug's claws resemble a man's face when fitted together. Noticing that it's late she approaches the only other person on the platform to ask the time, and the overcoat man raises his head. Realizing it's a fully grown evolved Judas breed she begins to flee, but it unfurls its wings and snatches her off the platform, flying off with her deep into the tunnel. Susan wakes up surrounded by partially consumed Judas victims, and trying to call for help to pedestrians on the street above her she alerts a Judas. When it tries to go at her though she stabs it through the chest with a metal rod, temporarily incapacitating it while she escapes through a manhole. Not having a ladder to climb back up she remains stuck there until eventually discovered by Manny. He then finds Peter and Leonard and together they rescue Susan, managing to pull her out just before she is grabbed by a Judas adult. The group make it inside an old subway car, but the Judas gets its top half through the door. Leonard begins emptying a clip into it so it rips its own body in half, falling into the car and scurrying away. Still alive it slashes Leonard's leg so he empties a second clip finally destroying it. Susan inspects it to find that it has lungs, she theorizes that because they evolved to breed, her accelerated aging process caused them to breed thousands of generations of evolution in just a few years. One evolution being that prey will sometimes mimic their predators, in this case humans. Suddenly a swarm of Judas adults pour over the car trying to get inside. Realizing they are attracted to the blood Susan extracts the dead roaches scent glands, smearing it all over the inside of the car, fooling the Judas into thinking they are friendlies. Leonard tells the others that the car may still be operable, if they can restore the power. Manny volunteers to hit the track switch while Susan volunteers to connect the wires, but Peter says he will go not wanting to cause the pregnant Susie any stress. Peter reaches the wires but comes face to face with Long John himself, having been smeared in their scent though it just walks straight on by. Manny miraculously finds an unharmed Chewie having been spared by the creatures, still insisting to his father that they are his friends. Manny wipes the bug juices from his head releasing his own scent, causing Mr. Funny Shoes to descend from the ceiling and tear Manny to pieces. Susan tells Leonard that the Judas could use the tunnels to spread outside the city, and that following the bug's typical pattern there is only one male which is the breeder. Worried about the others, Susan puts on the last of the scent and goes out to find Manny, finding nothing left of him but Chewie. Peter gets the power going and the car is still operational, but Manny failed to hit the track switch and it gets stuck. Seeing that Leonard is bleeding profusely Peter is refused entry for his own safety, and goes to collect Susan and Chewie. The bugs come back blocking the path between them and the train, so knowing he is doomed anyway Leonard sacrifices himself to lead the monsters away from the group. He is soon tackled to the ground, getting some shots off before it inevitably kills him. Peter helps Susan and Chewie into a service elevator, and sees the leader of the colony come crashing into the chamber, so Peter sends the two up wanting to find a way to destroy the Judas breed while he's here. When he is forced to run down an access tunnel the male breeder chooses to go for Susan, first trying to cut the lift down then chasing them up the shaft. But Susan manages to get out of the lift in time and send it crashing down into the mail. Peter looks around to see that the tunnel led him into the main nursery of the colony, surrounded by thousands of adults hanging from the ceiling. Thankfully though there are gas pipes around the room and Peter picked up Manny's lighter. But Peter is knocked to the ground by a couple of Judas adults and drops the lighter into the water below him. As they all begin to wake up and surround the intruder, Pete uses a service axe to strike the metal ground, creating a spark before they get to him and blowing the sewer sky high. And the male makes this noise. Before Susan can recover from the explosion the breeding male shows back up. He ignores Susan's shouts for attention and goes straight for Chewie, so Susan slashes her palm with Manny's crucifix, causing the male to chase her in a bloodlust. She runs head on with an oncoming train, stepping at last second causing the train to hit the male, finally tearing him to pieces. While cleanup crews attend to the city Susan is told by Dr. Gates that firefighters found no signs of life. Assuming this includes Peter, she is pleasantly surprised when he comes walking out of the subway, having been knocked into the sewer water by the explosion. Peter tells her they are expecting. And the movie ends. Mimic is a 1997 science fiction horror film directed by Guillermo del Toro. Written by del Toro and Matthew Robbins and based on Donald A. Wolheim's short story of the same name. 
starring Mira Sorvino, Jeremy Northam, Josh Brolin, Charles S. Dutton, John Carlo Giannini, F. Murray Abraham, and Norman Reedus in his Hollywood debut. What has been putting that shit all over the wall? Weinstein threatened to fire Del Toro during production. However, Mira Sorvino intervened and threatened to quit the film if he was, receiving support from her then boyfriend Quentin Tarantino. Since then, Del Toro never worked with the Weinsteins again, and the film has since featured on the Telegraph's list of six films ruined by Harvey Weinstein. Thank you for watching. Subscribe for more.